Welcome to the short tutorial on data modeling relationships in Power BI. But this actually goes well beyond Power BI into SQL and other database management tools and data warehousing in general. So I'm frequently asked about data modeling. So let's go and first discuss why we need table relationships. Well, actually thinking on a conceptual level, how your tables or processes relate to each other ensures data integrity, accuracy, and we want to minimize redundant data. Now, a core element of this data modeling is what we'll look at, creating relationships between tables. These enable us to run queries across different tables in our database and therefore get more powerful insights. It also, like we said, improves storage, eliminates redundancy, um, and actually makes getting data and querying it easier. So we're going to look at one-to-many, many-to-one, one-to-one, and many-to-many -many relationships. These are your key data modeling relationships. So the reason I've grouped together many-to-one and one-to-many, these are most likely the two out of the four most frequent relationships you will come across, or they should be anyway. Um, but they're actually just two sides of the same coin. So you may look things from one perspective, let's say from the customer perspective, and that would be a one-to-many relationship in the example below. Now, the order side, again, would be a many-to-one because we're just sort of almost flipping over the viewpoint. But this does, you know, relate to dimensional tables, lookups, what you actually may slice your data by, which table order that appears in. So it is important to bear in mind. Anyway, so like we said, this is your most frequently occurring relationships. In the example below with the orders table and the customers table, you could assume that the orders could be your fact table and the customers could be a dimensional table where the orders is a more granular view of the data. Now, in the orders, we see the many symbol, the asterisk. That's because we, can, we are connecting orders and customers by the customer ID that works conceptually. Now, in the orders, we could have many customer IDs over the span of one or many orders. However, the customers is a dimensional view of customers, and we would just have one customer ID per customer. So let's look at one to one relationships. Put simply, both tables that we're linking together via the relationship both have just one instance of a value. So we might choose to break larger fact tables, more granular data, into dimensions or lookup tables like this item category or item. And we may need to link these via this type of relationship. So if we look at the example below, item and item category, they both have an SKU, which is a common ID for an item of inventory, a stock keeping unit. Think of it, it could be like a barcode. Now, if we connect the SKU in item to item category. That's one to one because there can only ever be one instance of an SKU. It's completely unique. Now, although many to many relationships are your least frequent, or I certainly hope they're your least frequent relationship, um, they're a bit more complex to maybe get your head around. But there are many ways to, to overcome this and break it down into one to many relationships. And we'll go over that. So, a many-to-many -many relationship simply occurs when there are multiple records in a table and then that's related to multiple records in another table. However, the issue with many-to-many -many relationships is that it causes duplication in the return data sets and for efficiency we always want to avoid that because it contributes towards excessive storage but it can also throw up incorrect results which is extremely alarming where our first principle um, of data analysis should be giving correct results. So if we look at this example below, we have student classes and class details. So we want to analyze sort of student, student data by the classes that they attend. However, if we try to connect this via the student ID, we're gonna have many students in a class potentially and many classes per student but we could implement what we call a bridging or joining table to overcome this, where we have a separate sort of dimension with the primary key from each table, and we can implement many-to-one or one-to-many relationships. Now that was a whistle-stop tour with examples of Power BI relationships, but hopefully 
this made sense. And as usual, like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.